obviously uh, um, fortunate to win that game. Uh, uh, lucky to win that game. We just gave up a wide open three to the leading scorer. Lucky that didn't go in. Um, but um, it is what it is. It's, uh, I'm not worried about the score games. I told you guys last week, and I know some of you guys in the media think that I just say stuff to make it sound good. I would hope that after being around me for five years, you know I don't say what I don't mean. Uh, I don't just say stuff so you guys got something to put up somewhere. Uh, we're going to get our team right. If we lose, we lose. If we're tired, we're tired. But we're going to learn to listen. We're going to learn to be disciplined, and we're going to learn to care. Um, and that's our focus right now. <coughs> uh, we're not there. I've got two, three, maybe a fourth guy that, that are been pretty consistent with listening right now. Uh, but outside of that, we, we got a lot of room for, for improvement. And uh, I'm not worried about winning games in early December. That's what was great about learning coaching as a high school coach is that you want to play the game the right way in March. Uh, when you're a high school coach because, you know, you make the playoffs regardless of what your record is. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I screwed this up a couple weeks ago. I told you guys. I didn't say that to take stuff off the kids. I screwed it up a couple weeks ago. I told you I was going to fix it, and I'm going to fix it. Simple. Frank, uh, just how uh, encouraging is it to see Hassani make a couple of mistakes in the last minute, but – had the courage to take that shot at the end and then drain the big free throw. Yeah, and then not listen on defense and and not do what he was told to do. And you know, good for him. He made a shot, helped us win the game. Uh, but he he's got a he's got a lot of growing up to do. A lot of growing up to do. And uh, you know, we got to figure out what we need to do to get him uh, uh, to to be more consistent with his approach, with uh, his focus. Um, you know, but give him credit. He he. Game on the balance. He, he made a mistake in the pass to Justin. See, that's the any time we throw that pass in practice, I take you out of practice and I make you run. And so he made the one pass that he knows that I never want our guards to make. Um, uh, but made the mistake, and I wasn't going to call timeout. Uh, you know, we, we were running and spaced and attack, and he went and give him credit. Made a shot and made the free throw. Coach, over this next span of time, you have some time off now before the next game on the 19th. How important will it be to kind of assess this game and, and try to clean up some of the things? And do you think it's nice to kind of have that stretch where you don't have to play games, where you can just focus on teaching? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, um, that's where I've changed uh, from my high school days to now. We'd practice tomorrow, and it'd be pretty intense. Uh, but I've gotten to a place in my life where I probably need to step away for a day to regather my thoughts and not stress them out as they try to finish the semester academically the right way with finals. So uh, our finals, our guys' finals are pretty front-loaded as far as the week goes. Uh, between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, most of the finals are out of the way. Uh, so we won't do anything tomorrow, won't do anything Monday. Uh, we we We... You know, I just said in my radio show, um, life's about dealing with pressure. If you can't handle pressure, you're going to fail miserably in any walk of life. Uh, we have to create pressure so our guys who have never been in an environment where they've been pressured to do things a certain way uh, learn to handle that. Well, they got finals this week. They don't need me pressuring them about basketball. They got enough pressure to do well academically because we also press on them to do that stuff the right way. Uh, but we'll, we'll do something on Tuesday, lift, uh, uh, some kind of film session, something uh, low stress. Um, and then Wednesday, we're back at it. And, uh, and then we go through the weekend. And I, can, I, I don't care right now about the score games. I don't care whether we're tired or not tired. We're going to learn to do things the right way. And, and, uh, and that's not going to stop. It's going to keep going. And if we win, great. If we don't win, that's okay. We won't learn how to do things the right way. Whether it's a barrier to success or a characteristic or anything that you want to at least accomplish, what is the biggest thing you want to accomplish over the next 10 days? Becoming a better team. And that's not a phony answer. That means that you get guys that care a little more, that grow up a little more, that focus in a little more, 
uh, the, the most important word in my vocabulary when it comes to getting better, listen. Guys that actually pay attention and listen don't tell you that they're listening and they have no idea what you're talking about, nor do they care to understand what you're talking about. All those things, that way they learn to speak to one another. You know, it's uh, um, all, about, all those components. And you, when, when all the other distractions, and when I say distractions, I'm not saying negative stuff, academics, off-campus responsibilities, all the stuff that comes with being a college athlete, they're out of the way for the next 17 days or something like that. I don't know how long it is. It's just basketball. They all want to be pros, isn't it? That's, that's every kid. Oh, I, I, I got 97 stars next to my name, so I'm going to be a pro. Well, they're going to learn what life as a pro is all about for the next three weeks, where it's nothing but basketball in their life. Now, Frank, you talk about being ready for March and just using Hassani for an example today. You know, here's a guy that got pulled earlier. You know, you, you disciplined him. I know you did that to a couple players on the team. And this isn't anything new. But for him to be able to come back and be able to do the things that he was able to to have that game-winning basket, how important is it to be able to, to, to develop that mental aspect of it early on in the season so that, like you said, once you get ready for March, you're ready to go? Um, yeah, that's – I hope that that's the way he embraces it and takes it. Um, uh, I hope that that's his mindset. I'm, I'm not sure if it is right now. You know, I'm not sure if it is. He's going to have to change. I can tell you that his mindset has not been good. And uh, uh, I kept telling him on the sideline, and life, this is one thing I know about life. In life, you get what you deserve. If you don't prepare, if you don't do things the right way, if you don't put your mind in the right place, in life, life will not send success your way. It's just simple. Doesn't, doesn't. Mean that if you do those things that you will succeed, it just makes sure that you don't succeed if you don't do those things. And uh, he's got to figure it out. You know, it's his fourth year of college, not his first year. Fourth year of college. He's got to figure it out. And um, I think he will. I really do. And like I said, credit to him for having the courage uh, on making a mistake. Like I, if I cared about the score of the game, I wouldn't have jumped him on the mistake he made because it's the mistake that I tell those guards don't ever make. But I did because I don't care about the score of the game. You know, like if I was coaching last year's team and Dwayne Sin, one of those guys that made the mistake, those guys are so connected with me that I would have said, don't worry about it next play because I was worried about the game. I'm not worried about the game right now. So give him credit. He made a mistake. He made the mistake I know I tell him don't ever make. But somehow he found the courage to come down and make the play to help us get a lead. So give him credit for that. Yeah, Coach, um, based on uh, today's game, are you uh, happy that you scheduled Coastal and are you looking forward to the next two years of games with them? Yeah, I mean, you know, Cliff, Cliff, is, is, uh, Cliff hasn't won 700 games or whatever. I think he's the only coach in Division I to win 170 games at four different schools. I don't know how many games. Cliff has won so many games. And if you count his high school record and all that, just keep adding numbers. Uh, he has helped me more than a lot of people in this business uh, as an advisor as to um, how to understand this business, how to do things the right way, uh, on how to pay attention uh, to the things that matter. That's why his teams are so successful, because he cares about people. Um, he's got no reason to have looked like hunted me out to help me. Uh, he's kind of done that you know, on his own. And that's the thing about me. I, I, I have unbelievable respect for people that try to help others. And, and for him to always go out of his way for me is, is phenomenal. He's helped me since I've been in this state in an incredible way. Uh, and uh, that's why we played the game. I told Cliff, Cliff and I spoke about this three, four years ago. I told Cliff, I said, Cliff, I, I can't play you when we're no good because I understand how good your teams are. I can't. I, I, we got to get better before I start playing you. And now we're not very good right now, but we're better. So it was time to do that. Frank, particularly down, down the stretch in the second half, this crowd really kind of came to life. What do you think of the atmosphere? Uh, today. Our fans are awesome. I, 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 here, here's what gets me, Andrew. I, 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 and I understand we live in the, in the era of social media where somebody says something and then somebody that was not even at the press conference takes what you said and they spin it in their direction and then somebody puts it on Facebook and then a guy puts it on Twitter and then some other person says that and then there's a media guy that has no idea what's going on and that media guy puts on their website, Frank Martin criticizes fans. 
when did I criticize the fans? Did I ever say Gamecock fans are bad? Did I ever say Gamecock fans don't care? Have I ever said that? I said, I need our fans to sit in the seats of the tickets that they bought. Is that, is that negative? All I did is I asked for help. That's all I did. And our fans are phenomenal. I, you guys that have covered me for five years, have I ever said anything in a derogatory manner about our fans? And I coached in a building that nobody came to, and we were bad, and everyone in the public said we hired the wrong guy. This guy don't fit here. This guy don't know what he's doing. I didn't sit around and cry and mope and say, oh, I can't believe I took this job. Uh, no, because I saw how much the fans care here. What did I say? It's our job to elevate our program so our fans care about our team the way they care for all the other sports in this school. That's what I've said for five years. I've never said anything different than that. Our fans make a difference on our basketball team. Our fans help us. They have bought 9,000 season tickets, somewhere in there. Am I wrong for asking 9,000 people that already paid for seats to help us? That's all I need. They're, we got incredible people that care about the school. We need their help. That's all I'm saying. And if that's a negative comment, then I need to do something else for a living. Coach, of the way that you've discussed some of the issues that you guys have had on the team, of this 10-day span before the next game, is there ways to solve some of this, get more of the kids to buy in, learn the message, learn what they have to do on the court, or is this something that you envision taking longer to accomplish into the stretch of the season? There's no timetable there. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely zero time. I, I never speak to you guys about our locker room. I never do. Okay. One of the things I said to the team after the game today, I said, Brian Steele, come here. I say, hey, Brian, David Cloninger was hiding behind a column because he probably read on some Twitter feed that one of our players told his girlfriend that I had suspended him. So we get to George on David's hiding behind a column, okay, to counting to see how many people got off the bus. We had seven guys on our team. Went into Georgia and won, okay, one. okay. It, it is what it is. You know, I don't know how, what's going to happen. I don't know um, – how long it takes. There, there's not a chapter six in that book. What I do know is I got good guys in my locker room, so I'm comfortable with them. I don't like their approach right now. We have to change that. We got a lot of new guys in there. You guys, it's, it's never their fault. That's why I was very clear when I sat here and I was not in a, I'm in a good mood today. I was not in a good mood last week. And when I said, it's my fault. I didn't say it's a player's fault. I didn't say it's the fans' fault. I didn't say it was marketing department's fault. I said it's my fault. I messed this up. I will fix it. And how long is that going to take? I got no idea. I like our team. I like the guys in the locker room. We got some guys um, that have learned how to do things at other places, and they got to figure out how we do things here. It, like I used to work a certain way and do certain things at the other place. When I got here, I had to learn how to uh, – fight for the culture of this university. You got to figure that one out. That takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Frank, looking at the defense, do most of the problems start from just not guarding the ball up top? That kind of causes the snowball effect? I was pretty clear today. You know what I told you? I'm, I'm going to tell you what I told the guys in timeout. I'm not playing zone. I don't care if we lose. I'm not playing zone. You guys are going to learn how to take ownership and guard the ball. Figure out a way to get some courage in you. And not cheat, not get sideways, not lunge, not reach, all the negative stuff you can do defensively. Figure out a way to guard the ball. I'm not playing zone. I'm not doing it. I, we didn't play. Only times we played zone today is when we have baseline out of bounds, which we play zone 80% of the time on that. The rest of the game was straight man, and I wasn't getting out of it. We, we, we need to learn how to – we got to have some discipline and courage. I'm not to, if I tried to play zone to bail us out to win today, then we don't learn. We're going to learn. We're going to learn. Coach Mike had struggled some today, but he tied the game at 76 with a layup, and then he made two big plays at the rim. Can you talk a little bit about that series there at the end? Yeah, I, can I tell you I coached? I actually called that play where he made the layup. I actually called that play. I only called it like 56 times during the game, but I called it again that time, and it worked, it worked that time. Um, Mike's got to play better. I, I don't know. Mike's a great kid. Mike's an awesome kid. I, I, 
we don't do the stuff we did last year without Mike. Uh, Mike's fun to coach. He's got to play better. I, I, I don't know how many rebounds he have today. It's, so now he's at 3.5 for the year per game. You can't play 30 minutes a game and get four rebounds. Uh, you know, um, he's got to play better. I, I don't got to his the physicality part of the game has to get better. Um, uh, you know, he he's got to he's got to be more productive as a player. It's, 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 I've got to help him, but he's got to, he's got to develop a little bit more self-confidence uh, and aggression as far as rebounding and playing offensively.